Alhamdulillah, it serves me a great uh, pleasure and honor to introduce our guest speaker for today. It is Hafiz Dr. Rafiq Abrams, who is the head of Malumid uh, Emergency Unit. And without further ado, inshallah, I'll hand over to Dr. Rafiq. أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على أشرف الأنبياء والمرسلين سيدنا ونبينا ومولانا محمد وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد الفاتح لما أغلق والخاتم لما سبق ناصر حق بحق هادي إلى صراطك المستقيم وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين Beloved fathers, mothers, shuyukh, teachers, brothers and sisters, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. All praise and thanks is due to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, who has once again afforded us another opportunity to collect in the beloved house of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Choices, blessings, and salutations upon our beloved Master Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Before I delve into the topic at hand, I feel it prudent and necessary to just give a disclaimer. Alhamdulillah, I am an ex-Islamia student. Um, I was born and raised up in Mitchell's Plain, and even though my parents could not afford it. Myself and my brother were given the opportunity to attend Islam, alhamdulillah. And the years that I spent there, I met lots of great teachers. I ran across these very grounds. And it was during those years that my passion and my love for the Quran really built a lot. I could hear the recitations from great ulama, such as Sheikh Fuad Khabir, and it really inspired me a lot. I never ever thought that the day would come that I would be addressing the Jama'ah of Islamia Masjid during those years. Never ever. And why do I bring this up? I like to take this opportunity to encourage each and every youngster over here that they should try and dream big, have huge goals, have high aspirations, to work hard at them, to dedicate themselves and to seek the support and the help of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Really with hard work and dedication and having the support of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you will be granted opportunities that you never ever thought possible. So may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept our efforts and our good deeds. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive us our shortcomings and protect us from self-amazement and from Riyah, inshallah. Amin. So let's get back to the topic at hand. So when discussing COVID-19 and the resurgence, I feel we need to go back to the very beginning. Myself and my colleagues, we still get asked the question, is COVID really real? Is it a hoax? Is it something that they made up uh, because they want to sell some kind of vaccine and somebody wants to profit from it? And not to go into too much detail, but yes, COVID-19 is very, very real. It is a virus. It spreads extremely rapidly. It's extremely dangerous. And it can kill. So I would encourage each and every one of you, and myself included, to not get swept away in those winds of conspiracies and fables and tales. You know, when some Buddha or some auntie comes to you, they've got no links to the medical fraternity, and they come to you and they say, and they have something to say, COVID is not that dangerous, this, that. And during those moments, I want us all to keep in mind 
the words of our beloved Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam, where he says the perfection of Islam is that a person leaves that what does not concern him. If it's not your expertise, they don't come in too much if you do not know. This hadith is found in the Sunan of Imam At-Tirmidhi, and you know, Imam Nawawi in his Abayin he also mentions it. So when in doubt, please follow the Islamic ethos of seeking advice from those people that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has granted that knowledge of, so in order that we all can be given a sound opinion. The Quran makes it very clear this distinction between people that have knowledge and those that do not, and there is, they're not equal to each other. So next time, when the Buddha comes to you and he says, hey, perhaps give him a hearing, but do not listen and pay too much attention to it. This virus is very, very real. Patients that become symptomatic and land up in hospital follow a very distinct pathological pattern where patients become rapidly oxygen dependent. This is a pattern seen throughout our country and throughout the world. So what is it like being infected with this virus and being symptomatic? First of all, it's not just like another flu. Yes, there are people that are asymptomatic. They are asymptomatic, no symptoms, and the carriers of the virus. But there are many other people that become extremely, extremely unwell. Many people that we know have reported to us that when they had this virus, it was the worst thing they ever, ever experienced in their entire lives, even though they had flus before. And this is the report of our brothers and sisters who have actually loved to tell us the tale. So to the next question, are we really experiencing a resurgence or a second wave of COVID-19? And if so, what impact is this going to have on us? And how can we protect ourselves? So when COVID-19 first hit our shores, I can vividly remember there was panic in the communities. People, when people started becoming infected and new infections started rapidly rising, there was hysteria in the air. We were faced with new government regulations and then we had the national lockdown. But what was the impact of this national lockdown? And now I'm going to give a viewpoint purely from the medical side. In many, many, many ways, the lockdown was a huge success. The rate of new infections starting to dwindle, we could once again visit our families and our friends, businesses could open, households could start going back to work and making ends meet, and economic recovery could begin, a massage could open, and the sweetness of prayer in Jama'ah could be tasted once again. So the national lockdown back then was in many ways a proverbial silver bullet for the medical world. It was an opportunity for us to reset the clock and to restart all over again. So yes, we are currently experiencing a resurgence or a second wave. It was approximately two to three weeks ago. It was as if a switch was turned on and we had increased rates of infection and increased admissions provincially. Our communities are being hit very hard and many of our shuyuh have been infected. What we are seeing is very similar to what we experienced when we were at the brink of a national lockdown. The question is, do we have another silver bullet? Can we expect another national lockdown? My sense, my feeling, and my opinion is that no. Our country and the average household will not be able to handle another national lockdown economically as well as psychologically. So the question is, what are our options? Right? What do we do? So what we do know is that the current precautions that have been put in place 
to limit the spread of COVID-19, they do work. We know that. The universal masking, the social distancing, and the hand hygiene. In the emergency, in emergency room environment and the greater hospital, we adopt these very same principles. And alhamdulillah, by far and large, they have protected our staff and they've protected other patients that come into hospital. So when looking at these, these precautions, I'll just touch on each briefly, very briefly, and common issues or mistakes that we find. With regards to masking, masking works well, it works great, if there's universal masking. Everybody has to be wearing a mask. If you're in a group and you're three, five people, and one or two people in that group is wearing a mask and the others are not, universal masking, the masking, the, 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 the role that it plays gets diminished. You have to have universal masking. The mask needs to cover your nose as well. It has to cover your nose as well. Having a mask just cover your mouth, uh, just covering your mouth, you know, it's to a degree rendering it useless. So when you wear a mask, make sure that it's covering your nose and your mouth as well. And if you come across anybody in a group, ask him, you know, sometimes we forget. The mask slips down. You see somebody, ask him, please pull it up, cover your nose. With regards to social distancing, ensure that you have at least 1.5 to 2 meters between yourselves. More than that is even better. And let us try from today, from this moment, when we exit the masjid, make sure that you have at least 2 meters away from each other and we disperse through various exits. And the hand hygiene, for some people is confusing. How does cleaning, washing your hands stop you from getting this virus? So there are studies that suggest the virus can survive for X amount of time on different surfaces. So by washing your hands, you are limiting that virus once you've touched something from going into your eyes or into your mouth. If you do not introduce this virus into your body, inshallah you won't get infected. So since we do not have that elusive bullet anymore, that lockdown anymore, this is the very moment that each one of us must step up. We must become the leaders in the fight against this virus. We need to become those vicegerents. We need to become those khulafa and those khalifas that shows the world how things are done. That shows the world a better path. We must become those advocates. We need to protect ourselves. We need to protect our households. And we need to protect our fellow communities. We need to understand that the role we are playing today and the role we are going to play will become that silver bullet that we so dearly require. We must find a way and a path to safely function in a world rife with COVID. So next time, when the Buddha comes to you and he says, and he finishes his story, and before you leave him and you depart, you tell him, "It's a gewa, and I see as the mask or you miss it, but you leave it." So to wrap up, let's keep our shuyuk and the ulama and our teachers in our du'as. They are people that are far better than ourselves. They do exceptional work within our communities, and they are the pillars of light amongst us. Many of them are currently being tested with this trial. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala preserve them and protect them, grant them a speedy full recovery. Should Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala decide to take them away from us, we would have lost so much. Also, I ask that you keep the frontline workers in your du'as. It is not an easy task to face this difficulty daily and we require your du'as and your support. I take this opportunity to thank you and thank the people in the background for allowing me to address yourselves. I feel honored, even though I know I am not worthy of such an honor. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala continue to bless this masjid, continue to bless this community, 
and protect each and every one of you, inshallah. Amen. Wa akhir da'wana. Alhamdulillah. Rabbah. Thank you very much to Dr. Hafiz Rafiq Abrams, let me get it again, an ex-student of Islamia, Hafiz al-Quran, medical doctor, also the head of the Malamid Emergency Unit, Dr. Rafiq Abrams, a frontline worker. We make dua that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect Dr. Grant him a good long, long life, amen, ya rabbal alameen, and safeguard him and safeguard us against this coronavirus, amen, ya rabbal alameen. And we continuously make this dua, Allahumma inna na'udh bika min al-junoon wal-judham wal-barasi wa min sayin al-qam. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us from uh, depressy, insanity, discoloration of our skins, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us from all dreadful diseases, amen, ya rabbal alameen. Once again, jazakumullah khairan to doctor. And also this is a request to make dua for Khadija Chogli, who would have been 79 years old today, if passed on. We make dua that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ta place nur in the qabr, amin ya rabbil alameen. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive her shortcomings and accept all duas made for her, amin ya rabbil alameen. And that comes from her grandson, Rayyan, and family. We make dua that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant all those who are not to well. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant them shifa kamilan. And those who have passed on of the mu'mineen and the muslimin, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala place nur in their kubur, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wide in their kubur, and grant them jannah to fill those, amin ya rabbil alameen. Just a request against one for the brothers, we know that we are in difficult times, and just a request for those uh, brothers to donate uh, generously towards the masjid, inshallah, and the upkeeping of the masjid. Jazakumullah khairan. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi ta'ala wa barakatuh.